Hello sugar geeks, it's Liz and Kristoff once again, and today we are going to be showing you some new ways to make a classic creme brulee. Let's get it started. Ooh, that was a good high five. <laughs> yeah! What are we doing first? We are going to heat our milk, then we're going to add our sugar. Mm -hmm. Could I use brown sugar? You certainly could. It's just gonna make a different color of your uh, final creme brulee. Then we are going to cut our vanilla bean in two. And then we use crepe the vanilla bean. And we add the vanilla bean inside the pot. Okay. And then we bring everything to a boil. Are you excited to make a creme brulee today, Liz? I'm super excited. I've only made creme brulee in a classic ramekin style in a water bath, but we're doing this a little bit differently, aren't we? Yes. Today I pick a really special container mm -hmm. that I think you will be really, really proud of. Yes. And we're doing this because as a pastry chef, one of the things that you can do is bring your creativity into everyday desserts and elevate them. That's correct. And one of those ways that you can do that is with containers, decorations, flavors. Look, design, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. Once it's boiling, we're going to strain this into a chinois. Okay. Into the egg. Into the egg yolk. All right. Strain out all of the vanilla bean fibers. Exactly. And cod. Because we want to have only those uh, nice dirt Mix, mix, mix. Boom, boom, boom. Bada boom. And then add the cream. Okay. Now we're uh, using this in a pretty big container, but if somebody was using smaller ramekins, this would make more, correct? Yes, so this one will be for um, two of those, uh, of those containers. I don't think people even think about making creme brulee in different dishes though. They just think it has to be baked in a ramekin. Then we can burr or mix the creme brulee mix. This is to make sure that all the ingredients are well mixed together. Also voilà. makes it nice and creamy. That's it. Nice and smooth. Okay, and we have pan and we have uh, silicone just to make sure it doesn't slip. And then we can pour our creme brulee mix inside our dish. And this is really enough for two people in this one dish. That's correct. So that's what we mean when if you use a different dish, different amounts. And then sometimes you will notice that you have a little bubble on the top of your uh, creme brulee. So what you want to do is to take a, um, a blowtorch and torch the top ah, cool. to remove all the bubbles. Nice, very smart. Okay, so we're going to put this into the oven at 190, 190, 190, for, 190 for about an hour and a half. So it's going to take a little bit longer than if we used a water bath, but it's actually safer because it's harder to overcook this way. It is safer. You don't have to pour water into the pan, so you eliminate the risk to burn yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like jiggly. Mm -hmm. On my opinion, this is my favorite way to uh, bake the, the creme brulee. And uh, the final texture will be super creamy. Sometimes your creme brulee is curdled. That's a sign of over baking a creme yes. brulee. Yeah, the eggs contract if they're baked too much and it squeezes all the water out and becomes scrambled eggs. And if you've ever had watery scrambled eggs, that's also from overcooking. All right, so now we're going to apply a piece of uh, plastic film over the top of the dish. And what's this do? This is to create an atmosphere of steam in the inside. But in order to have that steam going out of the dish, we want to poke some holes inside the film so the steam can evaporate and doesn't have uh, any add-on on water on the top of your creme brulee. Voila, and then we can bake it in the oven. All right, be careful when you're putting it into the oven because if you just grab it and slosh it around like I just did, it can make a little mark on the outside of the glass. All right, our creme brulee is baked. So you can see the creme brulee is all set on the top. It doesn't juggle. That's me, no creme brulee is baked. Now uh, remove the wrap mm -hmm. and put it in the cooler to completely cool down our creme brulee. I'm so, I still can't believe that we don't even have to do a water bath, that you can just bake it at the low temperature and it's fine. So you see, our creme brulee is uh, nicely uh, cold okay. and uh, ready to be uh, burned with uh, some sugar on the top. If it didn't have the sugar, it would just be custard. <laughs> I like to use the sugar in a raw. Because it's got a little bit of the molasses left in it, right? Yes, it's nice flavor and also uh, I found that it is caramelizing uh, more evenly than the granulated sugar. And then you take the, the glass 
and you tap, tap, tap. Then we're going to add a little bit more. Tap, and to make sure to have an even layer of sugar on the top of all the creme brulee. Ooh. Any uh, special tips for torching? Uh, no, I will just go uh, in a different uh, layers instead of staying in one only area. Mm -hmm. I will go in uh, uh, slowly all across the, the sugar uh, to ensure an even caramelization. All right. So uh, keep it moving. So for this type of container that we are using, you couldn't use the uh, broiling trick. But if you had an open ramekin, you could do the broiling trick in the oven, right? Correct. But otherwise, a torch is kind of the only way to do this. Wow, that looks so nice, even. Yes. And it's going to cool down and make that nice little crisp. Exactly. You're going to have a really thin crust of caramelized sugar. OK. And then what else are we putting in here? Because one of the things that you like to do is take something simple like creme brulee and elevate it and make it a little bit fancier. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to add a little bit of uh, berries, maybe some flour. Okay. Or... I'm coming from uh, south of the France in Provence, and uh, I grew up surrounded of lavender. Mm. So I think that would be great. Look at that. Oh, wow. Beautiful. If this got put in front of me, I would be very excited. All right, you go first. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. It's very course. polite. And I go second. Oh, my God. So creamy. Amazing. That sugar in the raw really does add a lot of flavor. I can see why you like this technique. You're not disappointed? Mm -mm. No? Great. I will be back then. So that's it, guys. That's how we make a delicious creme brulee. Go ahead and post your version of Christophe's creme brulee and don't forget to tag him at Christophe Rule Pro on Instagram. We would love to see those. We could share them in our stories. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ding the little bell so you know when the next video is coming out. Until then, we will see you all in the next video. Bye. Bye.